following presentation is an original home movie footage of a train traveling on the local line. We chronicle the history of the British Railways. Oh, 
to the coming of the railway in Tito West. I'm Joe the Blackbird. I don't want the railway. It's a stupid idea. When the railway comes, people will take the train instead of ride horses. They won't want the horseshoes I make. How will I make my money? I will lose my job and it will be all Brunel's fault. I just hope I keep my job. I'm Percy the farmer. I want the land to come to Glamour. I want the railway to come to Glamorganshire. My mum told me time is precious, don't waste it. This will prevent me from this will prevent me from wasting time as I could get all my goods across to my best customers and the railway company said they'll pay me four hundred and fifty pounds to build across my land. That's so much money I'll never have to work again. Hello, I'm Bill the farm and I don't want the railway cutting right across my farm. I'm worried that the, my animals will stray right onto the track and might die. And how will I get to the other side anyway? The railway is useless. Hello, I'm a vicar and I don't want this railway coming here. I don't like new ideas and I don't trust them. I don't believe people can travel at such fast speed. It's far too dangerous. It might harm the countryside. My name is Thomas and I want the Great Western Ra Railway to be built. I'll move from where I live in Aberystwyth and bring my children with me. My children could possibly get an education and, grow and make a living when they grow up. My name is Miss Evans. I don't want the railway. I teach at Tinwin Primary School and the new railway will run past the school. What if the children will misbehave? And I'm also concerned about their education. If they're ill, then they won't be able to come to school. What if they fail when new tests are coming up? I am Constable Biggins. I don't want the railway here. Pickpocketers will come here from Cardiff by train. They will hang around the railway all night. It will make my job so much more difficult. My name's Mary, and I don't want this railway here. I'm worried that it won't be safe to travel by train. What if the sparks from the engine set fire to the countryside along the way? I live in a white city. My house is right by the railway. What if it sets fire to my house? I am Brunel. I want my railway to be built because technology is developing at a fantastic rate. I will improve communication throughout the land and ensure that Great Britain remains great. Okay, I'm Sean Lynch. I'm a London driver from Newport. I want the Great Western Railway here because I drive vendors between Stockport and Darlington Wheel. Ten orders of advanced in trains. Hello, I'm Alice and I am extremely excited for the railway to be built. My mother said it is a smooth, short and cheap journey. It will also help me get back and forth to school faster. My name's Emily and I'm a passenger and, and a farmer's daughter. I think the railway is a good idea. My brother tells me that a journey by train is smooth, comfortable and very fast. I'm looking forward to travelling on, on a train for the first time and it will be faster for things to be transferred such as coal, wood and things we need for our homes and farms here in Tree Thomas. We visited Tree Thomas Railway Station. We made several visits to the Tritomas Railway Station. It was derelict and eerie. We saw evidence of the old sleepers, entranceway and platforms. We talked to a local resident about their memories of the railway. standing on the old platform. Here I am where the old platform used to be. The clear view of the platform. I'm standing 
where the tracks used to be. This is a clear view of the platform, and this is where the tracks used to be. Here are ev evidence where the track used to be and the sleepers. These are the remains of a platform in Thomas Station. You can just imagine all the people waiting for a train to come by. It's plain to see why this is the lost railway of Thomas. Behind me is where the ticket office used to be. Sad to see it's been knocked down. Down this track would have been Macken. We interviewed the last station master, Mr John Davis, and told us some very interesting facts. I'm Carmen and I'm from the History Society and I'm very thankful I'm here with Mr John Davis and I'll just be asking him about his job because he was the last, rail, last um, railway master at Machen and I'll just be asking you about your job. Thank you. So what was your job? What did you do? Well, as a station master, you're in charge of a certain stretch of line. Also, uh, you're in charge of staff. And you're responsible to see that everything goes safely and well. And also, in many ways, you should look after your staff. And by looking after your staff, you've got what you call a happy united family, which goes a long way. Do you have any special memories about... Well, you can have uh, quite a lot of memories. I think you were told of one yesterday. Uh, Mrs Livingstone, she was going off duty, and she came in and she said, Boss, there's a wagon coming down here and it's on fire, and I didn't take no notice of her. Anyhow, the train stopped, the freight train, and when I looked out, it was underneath uh, uh, the main gas pipe. So I shouted to the, uh, the train men, better get from there, or we're going to have an explosion. And they left the, move, the water running, but by gosh, didn't they move? Because anything could have happened, they could have blown up. But that's one of the highlights, I think. But um, at some exciting times, uh, we dealt with, well, or I, I dealt with, uh, derailments on the uh, supervisory side and I found the job very very interesting although only a small station there was a how can I put it there was a happy atmosphere and that went a long way I had wonderful staff and they never let me down not once so do you rather the steam trains that you had back then or the trains that we have now oh yes when you see a steam train even now it's like the aroma of lovely fresh coffee. It's wonderful. All right, I know we got to move with the times. And uh, I was on the, I was off duty, but I went back to see the last passenger train going through Machen. And that was the 9-5 off Machen station up to uh, Neutradivia. Uh, Machen station at one time was an important uh, station. It was a connection with the, the old Brecon and Merthyr Railway. Uh, it went from St. Machen, well, Newport, up to Brecon, where it went via Bargoy. And at uh, other Bargoy, you had a junction where it went up to Neutradiga. And at one time, it went beyond Neutradiga, it went right through to Rumney. But they had a major landslide between Amatasug and Neutradiga, and that was the end of the passing train between Neutradiga and Rumney. Uh, also, we had uh, another passenger section which went from Bacher Station to Caffilly via what we used to call the PC and N line, the Pont de Caffilly and Newport line. And I can imagine it being very, very busy at one time. And believe it or not, uh, Machen Station was one time an important station on the Brecon and Merthyr because they also had uh, engine sheds at, Ma at Machen, and not many people know of that. So it was important. And also, believe it or not, for a small station, there were three signal boxes involved with Machen Station. That was Machen Junction, down with Lower Machen South, and the old church road, road signal box, which is uh, at Lower Machen. And they were all used, and all, uh, how can I put it, they had their moments. Some was the very sleepy moments, 
but sometimes we're a little bit busy. But Machen at one time, as I say, was known as an important station on the Brecon and Merthyr line. Thank you very much. A part of our study, we've been learning about the beating with the thought. So what is your opinion on that? Please. Well, I've got to be careful what I say. But what beaching then, a seven-year-old child could do. Uh, anybody can close a railway line. Anybody can close a station. And once it closes, on many occasions, that's the end of it. But thank goodness, a lot of that is now coming back. Back better than ever. And we as, how can I say, working railway people, we were hurt because many people were made redundant. And nobody... Nobody likes to be made redundant, especially when it's a happy family. But uh, as I say, many of those stations that were closed, they are now coming back to life. Thank goodness. So what passengers did we have? Well, we had various passengers. We had uh, school children, troublemakers. <laughs> no, not really. They were good. And uh, we also had a few miners. Um, there was, at one time, miners' trains, which were taking the miners to bed was colliery. And uh, also, we had workers going over to Caffili sheds, as we call it, where the engine sheds used to be. And they used to run a special train from Newport to Caffili sheds, uh, conveying these people. And that was the last of the passenger trains, actually, that ran across to Caffili. It was going up in the morning and returning back in the evening. And when that train came back in the evening, it used to pick up, as we call, two additional coaches to convey back to Newport. So what time would the first train come? The first train, if I remember right, it was about 5.15 off Newport in the morning. Uh, and that was to Neutradiga. The first Brecon train was uh, 8.3 off Newport in the morning. That was via Bargoid, of course. Um, but it wasn't a busy station passenger-wise, but uh, what people that used it, they were very, very nice people. And there was that, that really harmonious attitude, which was lovely, lovely. What time did the last train come from? Well, uh, the last train, if I remember rightly, was 9.15 off, New off Neutradiga. That was uh, going down to Newport. The last Brecon train, I think, was about, uh, well, on a Saturday, was 8-3 off, uh, off Brecon, uh, coming down the valley. Thank you very much. I'm Carmen, and I'm from the History Society, and I'm very lucky today to be sitting with Mrs Livingstone today. And she is just going to tell us about her job, because she used to work at the Machen Railway, so she'll just... Tell us about your job. I worked at Machen Railway Station from 1960 to 1962 till actually till the last train went up. Um, I speed the ticket office, give the tickets, uh, and then when the trains came up, we were going up as far, we had trains going up as far as to Diga, down this top, and Brecon, right up to the top of Brecon. And then um, when the trains came in, I would go across the other side, shut the doors, make sure all the doors were shut, make them tidy. Then I come back across and then um, wait more tickets there for people to go on to another line. And then um, we used to make sure that the, the booking office was all nice and tidy. And then we'd have a, a bell, something like, well, see the see, this year like this. Um, he would ring then to the other station to say that this train now is now leaving, like this. This train is now leaving and then to go on to his next to the next station and is everything all right on it so we would say yes but this one particular day I was knocking off finishing my shift and a train came up full of wagons full of wagons and it stopped and in Machen station we got a big huge bridge and there was a big gas pipe underneath it and the train came in and stopped underneath it and I went in and I said to the station master Mr Davis I said you've got a train on fire Yes, he says, you know, not take any notice of me. So I said, oh, Mr. Davis, I said, you've got a train on fire. Yeah, and I said, it's right underneath the gas pipe. Oh, there we are. This was all, all everybody was rushing then to get the train up to the way from the gas pipe. So that was one incident. 
Another incident then, I had a passenger. Here, you weren't allowed to shut the doors on the train, so, but this particular passenger, she shut the door on her hand. And then she tried to say then that um, I had shut the door on her hand. And I said, no, because if I shut your door, why are the other doors open? So of course we had to, so she tried to say then that I shut the door, but I didn't anyway, so that was all right. But that, that was classed as an act of God. So then we used to keep the gardens tidy, make sure that was tidy, make sure that the waiting room was tidy. We had a cold fire in the booking office, and the station master had his own booking office, so that was his. And then, um, as I said, we used to have the two wagons then for the coal. Um, Mr. Gag was in the van, so we had to clear all his, his coal, so that they only had a certain time to clear the coal, so that we meant to make sure then that you know, the certain time his coal had to be all gone and the wagons came in for his coal and so would the other coal merchant. So that they, there was that. And then, um, well, that's how the ship went on. Do you have any special memories from when you... I loved it. Absolutely loved it, yes. It was lovely because when the trains came into Matton Station, of course they'd all, boo, and then all the, all the smoke would, yeah. <laughs> would go up and absolutely everywhere. And when, of course, when you went on, on the train, they used to have um, to pull the window up with a leather belt. So I had to pull the window up with a leather belt, and um, and that was fine as well then. So yes, it was lovely, really lovely. Do you prefer the modern trains we have now or the steam trains? Steam. Steam trains. Yes, absolutely smashing. Yes, it was lovely. Here we are. We conducted an interview with Dr. Beechen. and welcome to this week's episode of Question Time. Today we have a very controversial guest, Dr. Richard Beaton. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Lovely to have you lovely, on the show. Well, lovely to thank you for having me, Mrs. Parkinson. I mean, your show, the reputation of your show goes before you. And I, I'm great, uh, very, very grateful to pretty much to you. Thank you. So, Mr. Beecham, we've got you here today to speak about your controversial report, the reshaping of the British Railways. Could you tell our guests a little bit about your report? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, the report is due to be published over the next few weeks. Um, yes, it is quite controversial, as you, as you mentioned earlier on. Controversial in the sense uh, that it, because of uh, the reshaping of the railways, uh, it, has, it will have enormous effects on... Um, the transport system in the country because it does, I think you'd agree, it does need reshaping and uh, economisation uh, comes into it because we cannot sustain the uh, amount of money that is spent on it at the moment. So basically what it says is that, um, I've got the report here, and it actually says we've calculated that at least 2,000 railway stations will close over the next three years. A lot of the, there's the, the, basically there's far too much duplication in the transport, in the, in the train system. And we can, we can actually make it far more efficient by cutting the number of tracks and the, and the railway. Unfortunately, 70,000 jobs are anticipated to be lost over the next three years. But that is, it comes, you know, it goes without saying, it's unavoidable, I'm afraid, Mrs. Parkinson. Well, you're going to be cutting 70,000 jobs. How can mm. you justify your humongous salary of 24,000 oh, pounds? Yeah, right, okay. I, I really am surprised. I know you, you, you pretty, uh, your reputation probing questions to, to guests goes before you. I will justify that. I don't have to answer that question, but the Prime Minister sets the, the, the salary cap and clearly feels that I warrant it because at the end of the day, if it makes this country far more efficient and, and well run, so be it. I think tensions are running high in the audience. Yes, we'll yes, move to some so. questions. You have a question, madam. A railway cuts a, a railway is in Pew Thomas, South Wales, going from Beck, Brecon one way and Tridiga the other way. I know it well. Um, I tr travel there to take my kids to school. How will I be able to travel when you are stopping that railway? Well, unfortunately, you know, as I explained on the opening part of the show, um, there are going to be uh, parts of the rain will have to close. It doesn't mean, madam, I will hasten to add, 
that you won't be able to get to these places. It just may mean a little adjustment here and there. There will be a local railway station, but it may involve bus rides as well. Um, and that's unfortunately the way it is, because we cannot sustain our present system. As I explained, I, th I felt quite uh, reasonably at the beginning of the show. Do you feel that's answered your question, madam? Um, I don't think so, but have there been any pub public consultation? It's a good question. Has there, mm. Dr Beechin? Um, mm. Well, I, I will at this point in time, there will be eventually be a public consultation. These are just proposals which, let's be fair, I think they will go through um, because we have to. We have to get them through. Um, they will be put through to public consultation but I can't see any issues of them happening because they've got to happen. Oh, we've got another question here, sir. What would you like to ask Dr Beeching? What's your earning all your £24,000? Yes, you mentioned that. I, can I just say, uh, Mrs Parkinson, this is... Um, you brought this, this situation up, and I think it, at this point it's irrelevant. Do you feel it's irrelevant? You've lost your job, you're going to be losing your job amongst 70,000 other people. Do you feel it's irrelevant that he is earning set £24,000 a year? I found it very, very disgusting that he's earning all this well, money, that's, we that's get down, to lose our jobs. That's down to opinion, isn't it? And with, with a high-ranking office, that which I hold, comes responsibility, and um, with responsibility you get paid accordingly. Have we got any more questions from the audience? Madam, at the back. I can see you're looking very heated up here. Uh, well, my family don't drive. Um, my children um, try to go to school by train and we are shutting down the trains going yes, from yes, Chicago yes, to yes, our madam. school. How are you going to solve that? Well, it's not a matter of solving it really. As I, I, I'm finding that I'm duplicating myself. And I'm repeating myself because the, the inanity of the questions, to be perfectly honest with you, Mrs. Parkinson, um, because we've got to lose these railway stations and people have got to lose their jobs because it makes the running of the country far more economic and far more efficient. And unfortunately, there's got to be sacrifice. I think we need to leave it there. Tensions are running pretty high. Thank you, Dr Beecher, and you were a very interesting guest. Now we have our next guest, a new pop sensation, the Beatles singing Love Me Do. Yeah! 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 